I was cast in Shadowhunters when I was 19. <laughs> on sort of a precipice of life and adulthood. Mom? And a lot of changes in everything that is my existence. And to be surrounded by a group of people on set and by a fandom that is so caring and so diverse and really helped shape me into the person that I am today. It's something I will cherish for the rest of my life. I'm Catherine McNamara and today I am unfiltered. <laughs> So my mother's a scientist and she's always been in the lab and never really wore a lot of makeup. So it wasn't until I started working in this industry that I had a lot of experience with it. My grandmother being a watercolor artist, she was always painting a canvas and that sort of informed how I looked at makeup. I ended up playing a lot of characters that wore a lot of makeup. So I sort of dove in the deep end of the pool in that way and learned quite a bit. But now I, I love playing with it. And being a chameleon is one of my favorite things about my job and being able to do that on my own with just a set of makeup is uh, quite a lot of fun. I'm a huge nerd, I've said it from the beginning. I, I credit, my whole family's in science and medicine. That's how I've always approached school and I think that's why I went through it so quickly. You know, I was allowed to go at my own pace and very accidentally ended up graduating high school at 14 and then ended up with a, a bachelor's degree at 17. And um, it's something that I, I'm still pursuing my master's and, and I'll always be a student of life and of everything I do. I'm so grateful to have grown up in a place like Kansas City. It's, it's such a wonderful little town that I feel is sort of a, a hidden gem in America. And also Kansas City has the best barbecue and I will stand my ground on that. <laughs> I was lucky enough when I was around 12 to find the theater community. I found acting and, and theater quite accidentally. I was a dancer as a kid. I did ballet my whole life as a hobby. And I ran into a family friend who was directing a community theater show. She said she needed a dancer for the, her summer show and I was the kid who would try anything. So I said, sure, why not? And there, there are a few moments in life where you have complete clarity. And this was one of those moments for me. I stepped on stage on opening night, something hit me like a brick wall, and I, I knew in that moment that is what I had to do for the rest of my life. And I, through that, found the theater community in Kansas City and started working there and ended up working with someone who was able to throw my name out for the night music in New York. So I got a phone call saying, hey, um, we have an audition for you in two days for a Broadway show with Catherine Zeta-Jones and Angela Lansbury. It's a Sondheim show. Do you want to come out? I went to New York. I did the audition and the call back in the same day. And 40 minutes later, I was at LaGuardia getting ready to fly home and get a phone call saying, hey, congratulations. Uh, come back in a week, ready to stay for six months or more. And my whole life changed. I'm also incredibly clumsy, so let's hope I don't break all of this glass. Watch out. I love mascara. If there's one thing that I will never leave the house without, it's mascara. When I first read the pilot for Shadowhunters, I connected with it instantly. I'm a huge YA fan, and there's something about Clary that I instantly connected with. From the moment I read the pilot, I didn't really give myself a choice of not succeeding in that. When I got the actual call, it, it was sort of a hectic day. I knew it was down to me and one other girl, and they had announced on the show's Twitter that they were gonna say who Clary was in two hours, and I hadn't heard anything. So I assumed it wasn't me, and then I get a phone call saying, hang on, they haven't told anyone anything. <laughs> I'd seen Twitter going crazy, and who is Clary was trending, and all of these things were going everywhere, and then 10 minutes before, the two hours was up, they called me. I said, congratulations, you'll be playing Clary Frey in Shadowhunters. And I was rendered speechless. I was so excited to play this character, but it also hit me in that moment that this entire fandom that had such passion and were so opinionated and were so attached to these characters was gonna find out that it was me in 10 minutes. And I just went, oh my God, I hope, I hope they approve, I hope they like me, I hope they think that I can do justice by this character. 
and I was given the warmest welcome. And I've just had the most positive experience with the Shadowhunters fandom. It's, you know, from the very beginning. Hey, can you watch where you're going? You can see me? Yeah, that's kind of the point, that you obviously didn't see me. I'd never played a character for that long before, but getting to live in Clary's shoes for the better part of four years and build those relationships, they took on a life of their own. And that was part of the magic of, you know, shooting the last season and shooting the finale. I give so much credit to the fandom fueling us as we created this show. It became a team. They're part of the family. I was cast in Shadowhunters when I was 19, on sort of a precipice of life and adulthood and a lot of changes in, in everything that is my existence. And to be surrounded by a group of people on set and by a fandom that is so caring and so diverse and really helped shape me into the person that I am today. You know, I'm, I'm 23 now, having come out of the show, a completely different person, but undoubtedly for the better. And I have every single person that came into my life because of that show to thank for that. It's something I will cherish for the rest of my life. Sorry, I didn't mean to spook you. You can see me. Of course I can see you. With Clay's finale, although it was sad, it was real. And ultimately, above anything, what I took away from it, they reconnected. This is where we go Don't I know you from somewhere? And whether Clary remembers everything in that moment, whether she never forgot it in the first place, or whether she will remember it slowly, or maybe she never remembers, it is their their love and their connection and that electricity between them that goes beyond the angel's spite and any demonic or angelic forces, and love will win out in the end. A perfect date for Clace in the human world, probably one where my evil half-demonic brother doesn't intercede would be really nice one of these days. I think it would be nice for them to go somewhere where neither of them are familiar. You know, they've had a date in Jace's world, they've had a date in Clary's world, but to go somewhere where both of them are unfamiliar and it's kind of unknown would be neat to see them explore on their own terms. My perfect date is is pretty simple. I love just getting to talk to a person. And whether that's having coffee or a meal or taking a walk or going on a hike, just something where we can experience something together and have a conversation. Because that, to me, is how you connect with people, is by sharing experiences, making memories, and getting to know each other. In Cat's Perfect World, a hypothetical Arrow spinoff. It would be nice to see Mia out of her comfort zone, in a sense. We, we see that a little bit this season. We get to see Mia try and be a part of a team, which she doesn't necessarily play well with others <laughs> at this point. Um, but to, to force her to grow and to see her humanity a bit more, to see her relationship with her brother, to see her relationship with the other people around her and, and to see her really try and take her own steps to, to improving Star City, but doing it her way would be very interesting to see. I'm constantly singing, I'm constantly making up songs as I go through my day. It's very funny, because um, it was actually on the set of Shadowhunters. We get to a point in the evening where if I was on set with Alberto and we got a little tired and loopy, we would just break out into musical theater duets. And actually it was a very common occurrence for all of us when we were all in one room to blast Disney songs and or musical theater songs and create an ensemble of sorts in three-part harmony. Um, in fact, we still end up doing that when we get together. It's a nice little um, piece that we all carry with us. Now that I'm not fighting demons for 10 months a year, I have a bit more time on my hands and I'm going back to music because it's something that I love. I love writing, I love singing my own music. 
you know, I'm, I was lucky enough to have my song Ember on the soundtrack of Shadowhunters, and now that I have a bit more time, I'm looking to put some more together, so keep an eye out. There was a point in my life where there were certain things going on and I had a choice. I could have lived within that darkness and gone down a path that would have been much more pessimistic, much more destructive, much more um, negative in every sense of the word. Or I could choose to have it make me stronger and to move on from it and to overcome it and choose to look at the positive side of life. And I was fortunate enough to have my mother, my grandmother, my grandfather, my friends at the time show me that path. And in that moment, I decided that life is too short to focus on the negative things. And perhaps that's why I am a determined optimist, because I choose to always find the silver lining when I can. And when I can't, I look for it on the other side of whatever it is that I'm going through. You know, we, we only have this life that we're living, we might as well enjoy it as much as we can. <laughs> Thank you. It's been such a pleasure. You have me lit very well. It's glowing. <laughs>